Hello my friends, welcome back to our channel. Home is where our heart is, where I'm absolutely blessed to be spending the day out in the sun, the sunshine, harvesting the magnificent yarrow plant. Now this beautiful pink and white wildflower is often referred to as a weed, but it's actually not just edible, but a powerful medicinal healing herb too. And its use for food and medicine can be traced back thousands of years. All throughout the history books you'll find Yarrow's name popping up again and again. From healing the great warrior Achilles soldier's wounds to being found in the burial grounds of the Neanderthals up to 60,000 years ago, proving that even back then people was using herbal medicine. Now Yarrow truly is a people's plant. Wherever people go in the world the Yarrow follows, bringing with it of course it's food and medicine. So today, it's Yarrow's time to shine. So come with me and let's celebrate everything to do with the Yarrow's facts, folklore and history. Now firstly, let's start with how did the Yarrow end up being called the Yarrow? Now to understand this, we just need to understand the Yarrow's Latin name, which is Achillea millifonium. Now Achillea comes from the Greek word Achilleos, and when you translate this, this means the herb of Achilles. Now Achilles was a great Greek warrior that used the herbal medicine of Yarrow to heal his soldiers' wounds. And then millifonium means of countless leaves. So we could call the Yarrow Achillea millifonium, or we could call it the herb of Achilles with countless leaves. Now let's talk about the edibility of yarrow. All parts above ground of the yarrow are edible and you can enjoy the flowers. Or oh, all the leaves. Now, yarrow has such a powerful essential oil type flavor like when you chew on cedar. It's very it's lovely and overpowering and you can really smell Oh, and take in the essence of yarrow. But as a food source, it's not great to just eat an entire bowl of yarrow or add too much to food because these oils, these powerful aromatic oils within yarrow are quite overpowering to the dish. So it's best to add just some leaves and some flowers to other meals and things like that. But the best thing to do with yarrow is you can dry it up and crunch it up with salts and spices and then you can add it as a savory herbal seasoning to your food. Now that makes food have a very nice yarrow scent and savory flavor, and it's very enjoyable. Now traditionally, going back in time, yarrow used to be brewed into a beer, and this beer had mood altering effects from anything from feeling a bit giddy and dizzy to feeling euphoric to things starting to get a bit groovy. <laughs> And nutritionally, the yarrow is rich in vitamins A and C with potassium, zinc, magnesium, calcium. There are actually over 120 compounds in yarrow. Among them are the flavonoids and tannins, all locked within the magnificent wildflower of the yarrow. So now let's learn how to identify the yarrow so you can welcome this plant into your life if you haven't already. Now, firstly, we're gonna start with these leaves and we're gonna really look in detail at this plant. So we are super confident that we can identify it. And the main thing for identifying the yarrow is these unique leaves. Firstly, yarrow, once you get used to identifying it, it's one of the rare plants that you can identify just from its sense of smell. And you should do this just to see what it smells like anyway. Crush the leaves up in your hand and take in a good Oh, smell, just bask in that ambience of the yarrow because them essential oils just absolutely, they're overwhelming. They almost transport you to a different place. Now that is the unique smell of the yarrow. So let's look at these leaves extra close up. So the leaves are the most important part of the yarrow when it comes to identification. As you can see, they're a dark shade of green and they're really finely divided and they look like little feathers. 
These are feathery like leaves and they can grow up to 5 to 20 centimeters in size. Now it's these that are going to really help us distinguish whether we have a yarrow or other similar looking plants. So remember the look of this leaf. Then secondly we have the yarrow's bright beautiful flowers. Now these can be a stunning shade of white or they can be fading to pink or completely pink and when you look closely they look like miniature daisies that grow in tight clusters. Now these flowers grow in what's called an umbel and that basically means when you look under the plant look up from the stem and you'll see it's growing just like an umbrella. So the yarrow really is a simple plant to identify and with a bit of time and patience you can quite easily learn how to ID this plant and welcome it into your life at home. But just to enhance your confidence at home let's compare the yarrow to two poisonous plants that look a little bit similar and then after that you'll be 100% confident that you can tell the difference between yarrow and the poisonous hemlock and hogweed. So here we have the yarrow and this grows up to roughly one meter tall. And then we have the hemlock, the dreaded poisonous hemlock. And this can grow up to about eight foot tall. The hemlock grows to a, a much larger size than the yarrow. And then if we compare the stalks between the yarrow and the hemlock, there's such a defining unique feature on the hemlock stalk that we should all know about and that is the stalk is covered in these purpley reddish blotches. Now a yarrow stalk is a beautiful shade of green, hemlock patchy red and purple and if you ever see that plant don't mess with it. Then of course we have the main way we can tell the difference and that's the leaves. If you look at the yarrow's leaves, beautiful feathery type leaves and then the hemlock leaves they're just totally different and then we have the giant hogweed firstly again you can see it's huge compared to the yarrow and then secondly when we compare the leaves as you can see they also look completely different so once you've mastered the art of identifying the yarrow's leaves and the rest of the flower too you can be 100% confident that you can get out there and enjoy yourself the yarrow wildflower. Now the yarrow is one of the oldest medicinal herbs on earth that we can prove that we used for thousands and thousands of years and of course we still use it today. They can prove that people was using yarrow 60,000 years ago because it was found in the burial sites and it was buried alongside the Neanderthals because they even used the yarrow for its herbal medicine. Now yarrow is world famous throughout history for its abilities of healing wounds because it's antibacterial, antiseptic as well as anti-inflammatory and not only that it can stop bleeding but even more unique to the yarrow which makes it an incredible healer of wounds is the fact that it's astringent and this means when you apply it to a wound it causes the skin to contract acting like a natural bandage so not only is your skin being contracted together it's also antiseptic antibacterial anti-inflammatory and it helps stem the bleeding what better thing could you think of to apply to a wound than that now the yarrow is also naturally numbing you can take the leaves a whole bunch of leaves and chew them up and hold them up if you've got a toothache keep them in your mouth numb your mouth and you can also pull the root and chew the root and this numbs your mouth too now you might need to pull a couple of yarrows to get this numbing effect but believe me it's there and when you get the right one you know about it so the yarrow is a powerful wound healing herb now if you want to use it for this you could just make it into a balm crush it up into a pulp and apply it to the wounds like that. Now you can also take the yarrow leaves and rub them on your temples if you have a headache when you're out hiking and this is said to be able to relieve the headache and if you have a nosebleed 
you squish up the yarrow leaves and put them up your nose and this will help stop the bleeding and it smells fantastic. <laughs> Now, the yarrow isn't just especially amazing at healing wounds, it's also an incredible medicinal herb in many other respects too. For one, if you take the yarrow's leaves and dry them up and make them into a herbal tea, this tea is actually naturally a sleep aid. And if you drink this tea before bed, it will help you sleep at night. But you can drink this tea during the day also to help reduce anxiety and bring a sense of balance and calm within the body. Now that tea is also a diaphoretic and what that means is the yarrow tea helps you sweat. So if you're suffering with a fever or a heavy cold, you drink yarrow tea and it helps you sweat that illness out of your body. Now you can also extract the essential oils from yarrow and rub them on your chest when you're sick and the beautiful fragrance of yarrow will help clear them stuffy noses and make you feel a lot more refreshed when you're suffering with a cold. Now, throughout history, yarrow seems to be known as a warrior's herb, but actually when you dive deeper, you'll see it's actually a very, very useful herb for the ladies too. You didn't need to be in a medieval war to use yarrow for its health benefits because yarrow naturally helps to soothe gut cramps and belly aches and things like that and it helps bring on the natural cycles of a woman's body and not only that if a lady's going through the menopause and she's suffering the yarrow tea was traditionally the go-to tea to help ease the suffering with that now when it comes to the yarrow's folklore i think it's only fair that we stick with the greek warrior Achilles because Achilles and the Yarrow are so strongly bonded throughout time it seems only fair to celebrate the mythology and folklore of that because there's more to this folklore mythology or true story than one might think originally it was thought that Achilles mum dipped Achilles into a river in the underworld to give him precious immortal abilities because she didn't want her son of course to get any harm throughout his life but others say that she brewed a giant barrel of yarrow tea and she picked baby Achilles up by one of his legs by his heel and dipped him in the yarrow's tea and when she removed him he was immune immortal everywhere that the yarrow tea had touched but later on in Achilles life in a great battle, Achilles died because an arrow hit him in the only place that the yarrow tea never touched, which was his Achilles heel, his ankle, the place that his mum held his foot as she dipped him in the yarrow tea. So, yarrow, Achilles, Achillea, millifonium is arrow, the herb of Achilles with countless leaves. What an incredible history goes behind this wildflower that we frequently walk past and sometimes it's so common it's like our brains don't even see it. This beautiful wildflower is not a common weed, it's an incredible edible and medicinal herb that's absolutely rich in history. Anyways people, I really really hope you enjoyed this video and I'm super super grateful for everyone watching we really really appreciate all of you coming here to our channel and watching our videos we love making these videos too and if you could do me a big big favor by hitting the thumbs up button subscribing to our YouTube channel and clicking the notifications button so you get notifications whenever we make a video I'd be extremely grateful for that and you can also follow us on all these modern world things Facebook and Instagram and if you're interested in helping us make more videos like this, then consider joining our Patreon. The links for all that are in the description below. See you all next time.